Hello and welcome to a CBK Gaming review video. Today we are looking at Tainted Grail The Fall of Avalon by Awaken Realms Games. This is a one to four player co cooperative game where you take on the role of a local hero trying to understand why the menhirs are going dark. Um, this will be a spoiler free game so it's going to be a little bit difficult to explain some of the gameplay but please bear with us. This was a Kickstarter game that we backed last year yeah. and we have ship in waves so this is wave one of the game which is the core set the guardian monsters so throughout the game you have encounters some of those encounters are guardians and there are models for those guardians and i think as you will see throughout the photographs and we'll put some photographs on the screen now showing how beautiful some of these miniatures actually are and we have the sun dropped um variant we backed the in the the game um the collector's uh, edition so absolutely everything including and uh, not limited to the journal yep. the metal coins the extra character neve the sun drop <coughs> um the mounted figures and and much much more to come including several expansions how does it play it's um card driven so the map is separate tarot sized cards which only become visible if you're a on the card and you can see what's next to you as long as there's a link but there also has to be an active men here and it has to be active it has to be lit and the timers tick down and these begin to go dark you you have you you race to keep these lit against the task which you're actually trying to to do so let's take a look at the content and just this set, <laughs> this is not including all the extras yeah. because they have not been delivered yet. There is a lot. The core set itself is huge. Add to that the monsters and you've got an absolutely top-notch game. Yeah. Cannot say any more than that it's it's a 10 out of 10 definitely for me. definitely it's it's certainly worth its money and i mean we've been playing this i think almost every day since it arrived just over a week ago yeah. and we still haven't even got halfway through the location deck of no. opening up how big the map can be and we haven't met every encounter that there is no we no, we've, we've just yeah. dipped our toe in in the, <laughs> the, the chapters really um yeah. and the story it's it's huge i mean we're yeah. only three chapters in four chapters in now yep yeah. and you can just tell we're only still at the beginning of the huge adventure that this game is going to be and one of the really a um, wonderful thing I think with, with this game is, and we will cover it in components. So actually, yeah. I think that that segues nicely into components. So yeah. let's look at the components. And as I say, one of the really nice things for this game is when you open up the game and you first sit down to play, and everything's really new. You've got letters from your <laughs> mentor, yeah, and they are all very different. They're all very well written. And I remember we sat down the first time we played this um, with four of us. So we had CBK Gaming, yeah. so Karen, myself and Chris, and Guy, LARP coach. LARP coach. And we all divvied up our characters and because we'd done the tutorial, we decided Boars 
was not going to be played, um, so Lark Coach opted for Maggot and the letter, um, <laughs> and watching his face just drop at the um, quite brutal letter that he received from his mentor um, really set the game and set the yeah. same scene. So I really thought that was very good. Um, it's a nice way of subtly setting up the backdrop to your character, a little bit of yeah. the backstory without just having to read, this is who your character is. Yes. It's in character that you're finding out who you are and what people think of you before yeah. you even set out. It was really yeah. does set the scene. Yeah. So again, for content, as I say, this is the sun dropped variant and I've seen, I'm mean, even the miniatures without the sun drop, they are beautifully yeah. sculpted. There is some absolutely lovely detail on these figures. Mm. Uh, I think the sun drop does, um, cover up some of those some of the uh miniatures so you don't see any of the loss of detail or the um mold lines yeah so uh I, I don't know what they'd be like without the sun drop I, but they do look we've seen miniatures painted and they they look outstanding yeah. um so again I, i'm going to give this a 10 yeah yeah. Uh, it's yeah. the, this is the and only game that's got two tens for I, me and i love the character boards mm -hmm. that they've actually got slots for the cubes to fit in um yes so they're, they're not they're not set on top they actually slot into the holes the whole character the character com comes out. Car a card comes out tells you how to set up your starting attributes gives you a little bit of information about the character and then you simply fit the uh character in um, upside down is not so easy. Um, this will become apparent with Neve, who is a sort of floating character, and I really like what they've done with her. <laughs> She's very mysterious, um, though got us in a lot of trouble when I played her, <laughs> deleting our reputation as you go along. Um, I mean, the cards are good quality as well. And beautiful artwork, yeah. outstanding artwork, absolutely driven. You can tell we absolutely love this game. We're really passionate yeah. about playing it, really enjoy the game. Um, the the components, the, the, the cubes, the, the timers, the grail symbols, the coins, the customised dice, everything is just... Yeah beautifully made you can tell that Marcin and his team have put their heart and soul as they do yeah. every game they produce and, um, and for me it's it's little bits like the journey book which you're going from page to page to page constantly turning pages they've made it spiral bound but they've done it in the spiral way that it's going to last yes it's it doesn't catch they've, they've done the quality yeah. of it yeah the pages don't catch as you're turning it it's They've thought about little things like that. What's going to be the most hard-wearing item in the game? Let's make the quality of that extra scaffold. It's They've done it beautifully. The other thing that um, I find really nice is the map. I, I like maps in general. I find them mm -hmm. fascinating. And that drew me to Oathsworn. Yes. Um, so the maps in Oath with the Kickstarter for Oathsworn, I really like them. and They're really intricate, beautifully crafted. But this game, they're not. They're hand drawn. They're rough. They're which really fits the aesthetic. Yeah. And they are. They add a real touch of. I don't know. Is is this right? Where should we go? What can we do? Where can we explore? Yeah. And it really is a game of exploration. Yeah. It's, it's the we need to head west. Because it's west on the map, but whether that's west, northwest, southwest, yeah. And it, how do you get it just there? Gives the that, yeah. And which, which way do we get there? It's yeah. Okay, let's let's look at complexity. So this is where the game doesn't get a ten for me. Yeah, it is a very complex game. I have no problem with that. I do not see this as a gateway game at all. No. Um, <laughs> it's the only game for me which is brought to life the old fighting fantasy novels that I yeah. used to play as a child. It's got that 
feel to it, but much darker. It's much more adult. The rules are written in the same style of English that the journal book is written. They could be much simpler. Yeah. And there is a lot of times where they've been ambiguous and we've had to really sit down and read through the rules. And as you start to play this, the tutorial's very good, the, the single throwaway little adventure. Very yeah. good until you start playing with multiple players. Yeah. And I think actually the tutorial would have been better in two stages, having stage one as the single player and then stage two, either having you playing two or three or four characters, it it would have just drawn your attention to how some of those mechanics yeah. work sing- and how different they are. Yeah, the single player takes you through the base mechanics, but when you then start playing with two, three, four players, the mechanics adjust slightly, which you don't get in the tutorial. So you've done the tutorial, you think, we'll start the game, everyone sits around with their own characters, and then we paused when we got to... It was mainly the combat system, wasn't it? Yes. Because of multiple players, the mechanics changed slightly. And we got it and wrong. And that's where we did. We got it we wrong the first it. couple of games. And I, I actually we quite liked how we did it, uh, in that you could help each other in the combat. Um, so you, what we did was, rather than have active characters, we all became active, and, and it made it a bit too easy, um, yeah. which is why it didn't work. But... Being able to go, oh, right, uh, I can see how I set up with this powerful blow, um, smashing their armour, how that then made it easier for the rogue to come in and and backstab or the mage to cast Mm. a spell. That really worked in in a storytelling way, but it didn't work in a game mechanic way. Yeah. (laughs) We've got it, I think we've got it right now. We we, we went through several different iterations. but yes, there were just little bits like that where we sort of gone, well, in the, in the intro set up single player, we were doing this. And you're going, doesn't work with two players. Okay, back to the rule book. How do we do it with multiple players? And it was just a bit of a start stop on the first game of multiple players. So, complexity for me, I'm going to have to give it a six. Uh, it it's It's a game for somebody that has already enjoyed board games. Mm-hmm. already has an idea behind mechanics. I think you could, don't get me wrong, anybody could buy it, anybody could play it. Yeah. I think the complexity might just, I would hate for somebody to buy this game and be put off by the fact that you've got to sit and read the rules and you've really got to go through them. Mm-hmm. It's not the sort of game, it's not like Zombie Side, which you can pick up and just play. Yeah. yeah. It, But that, that rewards its rewards you with an absolutely brilliant experience and really enjoyable storytelling see i'm i'm actually going to go i was going to say six but i'm thinking now that we're sort of hours into it i'm actually going to go with a seven because once you've got over that initial having to go back and keep Mm -hmm. referring to the rule book for a couple of hours on the first play and we're talking we would sit and talk so sit and play for four hours at a time Mm -hmm. so it's only the first couple of hours that we were just tripping over a few bits after that i mean yesterday this morning we were just rolling through it quite easily once once you've got it into your head it is easy to keep going Mm -hmm. and we don't have to refer back to the rules now so once you've got over the initial learning it's actually they also provide faq cards which are really good um so yeah okay Replayability. Replayability. It's a cooperative game yeah. that automatically loses a point, if not more. Um, however, that being said with this, there's different modes. So there is a competitive mode. There is a challenging mode, which I dread <laughs> to think how that's going to play out. Um, the initial way of playing it is very much the story. Um mm. But the challenge, once you've perhaps completed that, is how efficient can we can we actually um, complete the quests? Not only that, there are different ways of doing things. Now, I don't want to give too much away. No. Um, there was a point um, that where we were playing where 
Maggot was yet again going insane and, and having to, to um, rest, I decided as Boars to go on a little adventure. And Boars, being Boars and, and not yeah. really very diplomatic, um, started, I think the best way to describe it is to fund a rebellion. Yes. <laughs> Much to Maggot's chagrin. Um, and I really like that aspect, that we can change the game. Yeah. We can affect things by deciding to just be brutal, to steal, to lie, to to massacre a group of peasants for not necessarily just being there, but being in our way. Or you can return to the game and try a different way. Try diplomacy. Try, um, And I really like that. Yeah. And I like that depending on who you're playing, there's some locations that you go into and when you explore, it's got the, do you want to do this or this? Or if this character is in this location, you get an yeah. extra option because only that character would know to do that in that location because that's who they are. Heavily personalised. And it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we have to point out that's not for every character. It oh, is no, for the core is. four. I don't believe that you get it with Neve. Um, but we're yet to find out. We'll find out. <laughs> um, so replayability, I think with everything they've added, with the decks as they are, the amount of random encounters, so the randomness here is the encounters, not the combat, uh, combat being that card-driven style combat, um, and the amount of different skills that you can get, the different items. There is a lot of replayability here mm. if you enjoy this style of game. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on how good your memory is. <laughs> how much you remember. <laughs> how much you remember. Because we played this four, four player and then we played three player, mm -hmm. so we set up again. And then we set up and did a two player and ran that campaign for a couple of days. Yes. So we'd done the initial part about three, four times over. And because we'd done it within a couple of days, I knew what locations I needed to go to for certain parts of the story, yes. for yep. the key parts. So I was going, well, replayability is starting to get a little low. but. If you're going to sit down and play one campaign with the same group of friends over a number of weeks, by the time you get round to going, no, let's start a fresh one, you're going to have forgotten the choices that you made. And there is so much of what you do in between and choices that you make on mm -hmm. the locations during which can actually affect those main parts of the story. So yes, I am go I'm, I'm going to agree with you and go with an eight. Because okay. although you, although at the moment I can completely remember where the first sort of quest part is and what I need to do to get there, if I'm a different character or to get there, we've gone a different way and gained a different item or a different status or something that mm -hmm. can affect the gameplay, I don't know how different that is going to play when we get there. It could be completely yeah. different. So although the game, yes. as we said, it's game, it's story driven. So the base story is going to be okay. the same, but there's yeah. so many components around it. So yeah, let's look at fun factor. <laughs> and I, I think it's very easy to say this scores a 10. Yeah. Uh, really enjoy it. Drawn to the artwork, drawn to the miniatures. Yeah. Characters are really interesting, diverse. Um, I've played Neve. And I've played Boars, you've played Ailey and Maggot. Maggot. Um, Chris really enjoyed a rev. Yep. I I enjoy this as much as I enjoy folklore, and mm -hmm. folklore for me was my go-to game, my the game that I really enjoy the most. Yeah. This is on par. Um, there are miniatures, but it's not a miniature game. No. 
So one of the discussions that we've had recently is, are there too many miniature games out there? Are, is Kickstarter driven by the amount of minis that you can produce? Yeah. And I think there's a very valid argument. Mm -hmm. This is not one of those games. The miniatures really make, really bring the, the game to life. They're really there to, you don't need the, the guardians. They're just an add-on. And, and I think that's very well done. We really like having them on the, the board. I think it's imperative that you have the characters. It makes the, brings the board, it gives that three-dimensional yeah. lift. The men here has worked really well. So, yeah, it, it's... And it's, it's beautifully fun because it's a balancing puzzle. Mm -hmm. you've, you've got to balance how much health and energy and terror you have against where you want to go to fulfil the quest that you've given yourself. And can I do it yet or do we need to take another day? But if we take another day, we're closer to this men here going out. So do we go and try and light this men here and then come back to that? And it's 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 frustrating at times because you want to do yeah. everything but you've got to make that choice which if you were living in this world that's what these heroes would be doing yeah they're torn between do i go back home and do this or do i carry on the quest and do that and but you can actually split up brilliant. the party can split yeah. up and you can choose to do different things um one of the one of the really good fun factors for me is the fact that you are juggling your health your mental sanity, the energy that you have, your exhaustion. Are you panicked? Are you going insane? <clears throat> and there's all these elements add up and make make it complex, but it's thoroughly en engrossing. It's really immersive. You really see this story coming to life in no way that I've seen any other game of this style do. Mm. Folklore dry, draws me in. Folklore makes me really think about the character and it, it's that role-playing game in a box. Um, Memento Mori does something similar. But Tainted Grail pulls me into an Arthurian world, which I already really enjoy. I, I love the, the theme. I really find it a fascinating way that they've approached it with the artwork and the the mythology that's written into it and the subtle changes they have and the little mm -hmm. easter eggs of nods to certain films which not going to support that just made yeah. us laugh yesterday <laughs> so definitely fun factor is a 10 yeah yeah and for me when we were saying about up until now folklore has been our favorite of this year it's well 2018 well, 2018 but we've still been playing it right the way through. But that I found is, I get so much into the character in folklore and it's the role playing the character on whatever quest and journey we're doing mm -hmm. at the time. This, I love the character I'm playing, but I'm fully in love with the story and it's it's darker. It is. It's, folklore was dark. This is this an adult game. This goes down another level. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, I, and, and I do think that should be mentioned. Actually, is I think this yeah. is. A, I, I would say it's a teenage game. Yeah. I think uh, you know, yes. sixteen-year-old, fine. It, it's it's not as adult as say Kingdom Death Monster. If I, if I was to use that yeah. game um, as an example, but it does touch on some dark themes. Yeah. Um, some horror, slight horror, uh, fantasy yeah. horror. Um, some quite shocking things actually which <laughs> really surprised us it was really good and i like that i like the, yeah. the you know when when our ideas become subverted i really do enjoy that and i think um as we say marcin and, and the guys have done an absolutely fantastic job yeah so overall i, I don't give games a 10 because i do not believe yeah. that there is any game out there that is perfect. If I was to design a game, I'm sure uh, well, the games that we are designing, yeah. they may be perfect to us, but they're not going to be perfect to, to other individuals yeah. out there. This is as close to a 10 as yeah. I believe 
a game can get, along with folklore. Yeah. Um, so to me, this is a nine, really teetering on that it's, it's perfection. That. If we did fractions, it would be a 9.9. <laughs> it is. Yeah. 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 We have completely fallen in love with the world that's being created. And they've done an this game. absolutely outstanding job. Yeah. Um, and we knew that that would be the case. We had the honour to play it at UK Games Expo and were really drawn into the game, eagerly waiting. We're very pleased that we were in some of the first people to get the game. And I actually have yeah. to say one thing about the delivery. Other Kickstarter campaigns really need to take note. This, this ship landed in Poland, I think it was Poland or Germany, yeah. and was shipped within days. And I, I've seen people saying exactly the same. Left Poland, arrived in America two days later. Absolutely hats off to the, the camp, Kickstarter campaign. Yeah. Yes, it was delayed. What Kickstarters, you know, most Kickstarters have experienced some sort of delay or issue. I have no problem with delays as long as they're communicated to yeah. the audience, which they kept us informed throughout the, the process. Yeah. So, And they've been really good in asking for feedback. And, that's what I was um, going to bring up, yeah. is actually, um, as soon as we got the game, we did an unboxing video and we posted it on um, their Facebook page. Yeah. And we were asked, um, what did we find difficult or what could be different and one of the things that we found is we have a friend who we play with who has who is colorblind and when he looked at the cards they were different difficult to distinguish the colors now they are different but when the rules or the terms of reference state draw a green card or draw a, a purple card the big difference for us was the brown to the gray because even i struggled on the subtleties on some of them uh, uh, well, the, there was that was... There, there was the cards yeah. but there was also the cards for your skills yes that's the and one that's where yeah. you're saying that yes um so each character has its own uh, combat deck and diplomacy deck and personalized deck they have a colour that denotes whether they what board they use, and they use this. The, as we say, the artwork is beautiful, and it's sort of this watercolour style, yeah. and th it's a bit of a faded colour. Some of those were difficult to actually identify, and even more so for people that were colour blind. Yeah. Um, we we have suggested that symbols may actually be easier for people with color, who are colour blind, and easier for people that um, want to look at it very quickly. Yeah. It's the only feedback that we actually gave, yeah. uh, other than around some of the rules. Yeah. I mean, we did note that all the cards have actually got a letter at the bottom. So once you've separated them into the parts yes. of the letters, you can work out who goes to which player. But that's not in the rule book. The it, rule book it is. It is as, in the as rule an book. an example for one. Uh, no, it is in the rule book. We 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 did miss it. Oh, we missed that. Um, <laughs> Really we were very eager to jump in and and deal with the game. And yes, and I think that's one of the things is that it. it some of the items were easy to overlook, um, whereas you could have had your attention drawn to them. Yes. Um, other than that, yeah. if you enjoy narrative-driven games, if you enjoy adventure games, if you enjoy a challenging cooperative game, miniature-driven game, um, even though it's not a mini, if you yeah. if you want some beautiful miniatures. Um, Look at this. On honestly, the they, they might have a late pledge manager open again after the first wave of shipping goes, but we highly recommend if you see this in the shops, if you see this available to buy, and you are in, you do enjoy cooperative games, you do enjoy those narrative, really strong narrative games. Yeah. You will really enjoy this. Wave two shipping. We'll be doing another unboxing. We'll be doing another review of that, and then we'll we'll, we'll um, do a complete review of the whole package um, when we have everything. But 
in closing, Tainted Grail is a superb game with great mechanics, combat's all done through cards. Again, we don't want to spoil anything, so we've left bits and pieces <laughs> out of the review. The combat is great fun, very cooperative, very sat down. We were sat down talking about how we we're going to be fighting and, and overcoming an adversary. Yeah. Really enjoy that. So, all that remains yeah. is to say thank you for watching. We really do appreciate any feedback, any ideas, anything you'd like to see. Um, if, you've, if there's any questions around Tainted Grail, we can always forward them on or you, we'll, we'll put a link yep. to their Facebook page so, um, where, where they actively do talk about some of the issues that are ongoing, um, ideas, what you'd like to see improved. And if you aren't already, please consider liking and subscribing. And we really do appreciate those people that do subs take time to subscribe to us yeah. and watch our videos. Um, it, it, we really enjoy sharing our passion for board games uh, with the community that we're building. So, thank you and we'll see you next week where we'll be reviewing a new game. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>